Have you ever met anybody you didn't kill? I haven't killed you yet. I'm too old for this shit. Lethal Weapon stars Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, and is directed by Richard Donner. Guys, about a month ago I did a top 20 on my favorite action movies, and Lethal Weapon was sitting pretty high up there. Lethal Weapon is one of my favorite action movies of the 80s. And a lot of people love this movie, uh, and it even spawned three sequels. It is just a very fun action series. And I think it finds that perfect balance of action and comedy and drama. So let's get into this review. So in Lethal Weapon, Murtaugh, played by Danny Glover, he gets hooked up with a new partner, Martin Riggs, played by Mel Gibson. And really, at first, Martin Riggs is like the worst nightmare for Murtaugh. Murtaugh is getting close to retirement, and he doesn't want any complications in his life. And Riggs is a huge complication. This is a guy who, his wife recently died, he's suicidal, he's crazy, and he would really be a pain in the ass for any cop to deal with. And at the beginning of the movie, we see Amanda Huntsacker and an apparent suicide, or is it a suicide? And so Riggs and Murtaugh get put on this case, and Michael Huntsacker, who is a, a war buddy of Murtaugh, played by Tom Atkins, by the way, had to mention that, but he wants Murtaugh to avenge the death of his daughter, even saying, kill these guys, uh, these guys from Shadow Company. And so later, Riggs and Murtaugh, they dig into this case and they find out that things aren't what they seem and that they're dealing with a group that are not your normal uh, everyday criminals. These are special ops guys and they could take you out just like that. And there's so many great things about Lethal Weapon and we're gonna get into the comedy aspect of it, but first I wanna dig into the story and how really the movie is an onion that you just pull back and pull back and, and there are these multiple layers to this movie. Did you hear that, Brian Lomax? I said layers. What starts out as a normal, you know, revenge story turns into something that's much bigger than Riggs and Murtaugh. And the reason why this story is so good is because Shane Black wrote it. It was one of his first scripts. If you know Shane Black, he recently directed uh, and wrote The Nice Guys. And the guy really just knows how to write a great script. As a matter of fact, he actually wrote a script called Shadow Company before this. And they actually mentioned Shadow Company in this movie. But Shadow Company is a script that was never made into a movie. And it's about this group of military guys that were killed and they do these secret experiments on them and they bring them back to life and they really become zombies and they attack the town. And it was gonna be directed by John Carpenter. Freaking John Carpenter. If they would ever make this movie and if John Carpenter would direct it, it could be one of the greatest movies ever. I mean, Shane Black and John Carpenter, and originally they were talking about putting Kurt Russell as the lead. And I could do a whole separate uh, discussion on Shadow Company, but I'm not gonna do that. So back to Lethal Weapon. There are a few scenes in this movie that are just iconic. And I, I'm just gonna break it down, I'm gonna talk about them. The first scene I'm gonna talk about is Martin Riggs. The first time we see him, we see a guy that is just completely down in the dumps and that is on the edge. He wants to kill himself. and. That's exactly what you see on the screen. The guy puts a gun in his mouth. He wants to die. And the performance that Mel Gibson pulls off in that scene is just legendary. It's just so real and so raw. It's probably one of the, the best suicide attempt scenes ever put on screen. And did you know that there was a real bullet inside that gun? Mel Gibson actually wanted to do this to heighten the tension in the scene to get the best performance out of himself. I think this was really stupid, but we're left with a great scene, but I would not ever recommend an actor do that. And really, Martin Riggs is one of the greatest characters of the 80s. Really. Oh, you sure are a crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think I'm crazy? Yeah. Are you calling me crazy? crazy? You think yeah. I'm crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you want to see crazy? I'll tell you. <laughs> That's a real badge, I'm a real cop, and this is a real fucking gun. Because this guy is just so multidimensional. He's crazy, he's psychotic, he's suicidal, but he's also an amazing friend. He's very loyal to Murtaugh. He loves Murtaugh to death, and really Murtaugh saves Riggs, brings him back to life. Another scene that I really love with Riggs is when he goes on top of the building to try to talk the guy down that wants to commit suicide. Jesus, there's a lot of suicide in this movie. 
But I remember first watching that scene and the last thing you think is that Riggs is going to jump off the building with the guy. And when he does that, your heart just sinks. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe they're doing this. This is crazy. And it's great. And it really just shows you how crazy Riggs is and how far he will go. He's a guy that just doesn't care. We love characters like that. Also, I want to talk about Murtaugh because Murtaugh is also a great character played by Danny Glover. And he's really the opposite of Riggs. And I think that's a big reason why these characters work so well together. Never in a movie have I seen a, a family portrayed on screen that I felt like I knew. I feel like I want to have dinner with Murtaugh's family. They seem like the quintessential American family. You know, they, they bicker at each other, they have their problems, but there is the greatest sense of love within this family. And when they bring Riggs into the fold, it's really, it's beautiful. And director Richard Donner does such a great job of building that family dynamic that when Riggs and Murtaugh are put in this situation at the end of the movie where Murtaugh's daughter is kidnapped, the stakes are really that much higher. Also, Gary Busey, who plays Mr. Joshua, is really a great villain. And who would have thought that Gary Busey would have been such a great villain, but he really is. And if you remember, he was also a great villain in Under Siege, and he wasn't a villain, but he was also great in Point Break. I think Gary Busey might be one of the most underrated actors of the 80s. Because of his troubles in his personal life, he was really seen as a joke, you know, to people. But the guy is a great actor. And really, it's not just Mr. Joshua. It's Shadow Company as a whole. This is a really threatening opponent for Riggs and Murtaugh. And they torture these guys near the end of the movie. That scene also is really a great scene, especially the scene with Riggs. And they're doing this electroshock torture on him. And again, another amazing performance by Mel Gibson. What an actor. Also, the comedy in Lethal Weapon is excellent. This is one of those movies, like I said in the beginning, that it, it rides that line. It has that perfect balance of drama and comedy. You ever met anybody you didn't kill? Well, I haven't killed you yet. The scenes where you're laughing, they don't hurt the dramatic scenes. They don't bleed over into the dramatic scenes. When Riggs and Murtaugh are in danger, you still feel that element of danger. And I think a lot of um, action and comedy movies, they have a tough time finding that balance. A perfect example, I think, is Tango and Cash. I don't think Tango and Cash is nearly as good as Lethal Weapon because it leans a little too far over into the comedy genre. Lethal Weapon does it perfectly. The last act of this movie, it, you completely forget that it's a comedy. It is extremely serious. It is extremely tension-filled. And I think a big part of that is because originally the script by Shane Black was much, much darker than the end result. He really didn't have that much comedy in the original script. So the dark stuff, they kept it in the script and they just added comedy. And I think it worked very well. Also, a Lethal Weapon review would not be complete without talking about the saxophone. You know what? Your beard's getting gray. Kind of makes you look old. But I mean, that's all right, though, because I still love you. <laughs> Bye, Bob. <laughs> the saxophone music is, it's iconic. And it, when you hear it, you immediately think of Lethal Weapon, and it's great. But I've always been curious, what if they didn't go with the saxophone? What if they went with a more traditional score? Would I have liked it better? Because if I had to pick apart the movie, sometimes I think the saxophone gets in the way. It works really well in the comedic scenes, but they also use it in some of the darker scenes, and to me, it, it doesn't feel right. And also, before I go, I gotta say, some of my favorite lines are in Lethal Weapon, but one of my favorite movie lines ever is, God hates me, that's what it is. Hate him back, it works for me. Love that line. Anyway guys, Lethal Weapon, it, it really is one of the greatest action movies of the 80s. I'm gonna give it a high, high purchase worthy. I can't quite put it as trapped on an island. It's damn close, but it has aged just a bit, but it's still a movie that I can really enjoy. It's still one of the best action movies for sure. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and make sure you check out my top 20 action movies video. I'll post a link to that. And also, what is your favorite movie in the Lethal Weapon series? Looking forward to hearing it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. And I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs>